Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Today we'll be installing a Max Linux on our computer. This will be a very quick step-by-step -step guide for the beginners. We will go through each step from downloading the ISO to verifying it, then flashing it onto the USB drive, running the live boot, and then installing it on your computer. This will be a complete guide, but if you want to know more details, I have a full detailed video that I'm going to put a link in the description, so you can check it out if you need more information. But this guide will be a quick one, and we'll just go through each step quickly, but it will still let you install MX Linux on your computer. So let's get started. But before we start, if you're first time to the channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. Also, if you find this video helpful and like it, please support with your like. And if you would like to support my channel, you can check out the links in the description. Thank you guys very much for watching and let's get started. So the first thing we gotta do, open up any browser that you like and go to the mxlinux.org. Go ahead and click on the download button here. It will take you to the download links. So the first option would work on the computer that are a few years old. I would say probably like five years old. But since I'm gonna install it on a newer laptop that has a recent hardware, I'm gonna download the MX23.4 X64 AHS, the Advanced Hardware Support. So just choose the one that fits for you and click on the link. It should bring you to this page here. And then you just click Save. All right, so the download is complete. We can go back. All right, once we got downloaded the ISO, it was pretty simple. So second step, let's go ahead and check it for integrity and authenticity. Let's do that. So I'll go ahead and click on the verify checksum. Let's just go open the new tab. And here are all the checksums that we got. You can see there is an alphanumeric sequence for each file. Since I have downloaded this AHS file, this is going to be the alphanumeric sequence that I need to verify. And you might as well click on the signature as well. This one will be for verifying authenticity. Click save as well. Just open the file explorer, then find the download folder where you have downloaded the ISO. Hold shift and right click on it and choose open PowerShell window here. And then type circutil, then space, dash, hash file, space, then the file name. For that, just go to the download folder and find the ISO name here. Right click on it, rename and then copy the whole name with an extension. Make sure to copy with an extension so it will be a complete name of the file. Then right click, copy. After that, go back to the PowerShell and just right click, then space SHA-256 and press enter. There we go. So we have got this alphanumeric sequence that we need to compare with the one that's given over here. I know it's pretty big number, so you're probably going to have to write it out and compare it because it's so big and it will be difficult, but it's doable. So that's how you check the SHA-256 checksum. If these two alphanumeric sequence match, that means that the downloaded file is checked for integrity and everything's good. Similar procedure will be for the MD5 checksum. So just type cert util, then space, dash, hash file, then space, Put the file name, then space, MD5, and press enter. There we go. Let's go ahead and compare it to the one that we got. So it's this one here. It will be like half the size. And yeah, you can see the 79 at the back, 85. So yeah, everything looks good. That means that the downloaded file is correct. After that, we need to check the signature for authenticity. To check the authenticity of the ISO file, we need to verify it with the GNUPG tool for secure communication and data verification. First, go to the website gpg4vin.org and download the GPG4VIN or for Windows. Click Save. Go ahead and install it. So just follow all the prompts on the screen. It will be pretty simple. Press Next. Just leave everything the same and keep installing it. Before verifying the signature, we'll need to import the public key of the distributor. 
This public key is obtained from the official MX Linux website. This is the command you need to run within the terminal. Just highlight it all and then right click, copy, or you can just probably press on this icon over here, then open the command line and right click. So we have imported the public key and press enter. And after that, we need to verify the signature. For that, just type gpg space two dashes verify space and then copy the name of this signature file with an extension right click and space and copy the name of the file in the downloads bin which is going to be this iso one copy right click and press enter there we go so we have got it all verified as you can see the signature made on the september 15 2024 it is a good signature from dolphin oracle Whew, that was a lot of fun anyway once we got it all checked for integrity and authenticity now we can go ahead and proceed to the third step and the third step is going to be actually flashing it on the usb drive you can have a four gigabyte usb drive minimum but having eight gigabyte would be better. And if you wanna create it with persistence so that you can save files on it, I would recommend getting at least 16 gigabyte. All right, let's do that. So go ahead and click on this link here. It will take you to the Rufus website. We wanna download it from the official website. So let's go ahead and download this portable one and save it. Then go ahead and click on it. Okay, let's go ahead and flush the ISO onto the USB stick. Just insert the USB stick that you would like to use to flash the ISO on. The first field you gotta choose your device. And in this case, it's gonna be your USB drive. Then click select to choose the image. So just choose it and click open. When you create a bootable USB drive with persistence, it means the changes you make while running the live session, such as installed software, files, or system settings, will be saved across reboots. Since I have a 64 gigabyte USB drive, I can dedicate quite a lot of space for persistence. Usually eight gigabyte or more is ideal if you plan to use the live USB as a portable OS with regular updates, more software, and significant data storage. So I will actually give it 50 gigabyte. This way I can save files on it and it will not remove them if I shut down the USB drive. This step is very important, the partitioning scheme. If you plan to work on both older BIOS systems and newer UEFI systems that has a CSM module and legacy support, then you should choose MBR. It will work on target systems with BIOS and UEFI. But if you're planning to use it only on the newer machines, that only has UEFI, you can choose GPT. So I would suggest you choose MBR. This will make sure that it will work on older machines with BIOS and as well as on the newer machines with UEFI systems that also has compatibility support module. I would suggest you highlight this option, add fixes to old BIOSes, as it will allow it to boot on older computers. And the last option is going to be enable runtime UEFI media validation. This enables Rufus to check the created UEFI bootable media at runtime to ensure it is valid and hasn't been corrupted during the creation process. Then for the volume label, you can call it whatever you like. Now the file system, there are two options. You can either use it as large FAT32, which is set by default, or use NTFS. The FAT32 is more universally compatible, especially with both older BIOS systems and UEFI systems. Let's just choose it large FAT32. Now, as you can see, the status is ready. Let's go ahead and click start and it will start flashing the ISO on the USB stick. But before you do that, make sure there is no data that you need on the USB stick as it will destroy any data on this USB drive and you will lose it forever so make sure if you're using any usb stick with some files that you might need to copy them before proceeding otherwise they will be all gone and most likely you will not be able to recover them 
so don't do that but since i have a brand new usb drive i'll just click start and it will flash the iso on the usb stick okay so it's finally ready and we have got it finished so we can close rufus and remove the usb drive make sure to safely remove the usb drive now we need to get our computer it could be a pc or a laptop first of all we're gonna do a live boot make sure it's running perfectly and after that we're gonna do a complete clean installation all right well let's go ahead and do that okay go ahead and insert the usb drive with the flash mx linux on it to the pc or laptop that you want to install mx linux on power on the computer and when it starts launching press a dedicated key to enter bios or ufe settings usually it is an f2 key but it could be different depending on your laptop manufacturer so i'm going to put a list of all possible keys on the screen so just choose the one that is designed for your computer then enter the password for your bias if it's necessary then in the bias go to the boot section if you have uefi it might be located a little bit different but just look for the similar section and where it says secure boot as you can see it is enabled make sure to disable it just press enter and use the arrow keys to disable and then press enter again now as you can see the secure boot is disabled and press F10 to exit and save the settings and then just press enter now it should start loading from the USB drive after you install MX Linux on the computer you can go back to the BIOS settings and enable secure boot again but meantime for the installation you need to disable it if you want to enable persistence on this USB drive you need to go to the advanced options then go to persistence option normally the first option would fit for most users persist all which stores the root file system in ram and the home directory on a persistent device after that go to save options and choose grub save save options and press enter so from this menu we need to choose the first prompt the mx-23.4 just press enter there we go it starts to load there we go so it has loaded so there you have it this is a live boot for mx linux and we can use it as it is on pretty much any computer so if you want to explore it that's fine there are already pre-installed tools as you can see if you go through the graphics there's office document scanner and more so you can go ahead and explore it if you wish but we're going to continue with installing it on the computer permanently so for that you just got to click on the installer just double click so here's your keyboard setting if you wish to change the keyboard before you proceed just click on change keyboard settings if you want to keep english keyboard just press next in this step select type of installation we will just go with a regular install using the entire disk this will basically use the whole disk to install MX Linux, but be cautious, it will format it and delete all the information from that disk. So if you have, for example, an existing operating system, or if you have any documents, files on the disk, make sure to copy it before you proceed, because if you proceed without copying them, it will format the drive and delete all the files. So you won't be able to recover them. So make sure to copy it before you proceed. After you choose regular install using the entire disk, press next and then press start. It's going to start copying files and installing them. So it will take a few minutes. Okay, so we have got to the point where we need to set up the computer name. Let's just call it Pulsar. For the computer's domain, you can just leave it as is. Then for Samba server for MS networking, if you plan to share some of your directories or printer with a local computer that is running Windows or Mac OS, you need to enable it. Let's just highlight it and then press next. Over here, you need to choose the localization defaults. So let's just put this for example. Then you're going to configure clock the time zone where you are, your continent, your city, whatever that works good you can choose the format and then system clock uses local time so then press next 
Then over here for the default user login name, let's just call Pulsar again. Then you gotta set the password and repeat the password again. For the root administrator, you gotta put the root password. So just highlight this, tick over here and set the root password and enter it again. I like to choose auto login so I don't have to enter the password every time I turn on the computer. Press next. The installation is almost complete. There we go. So the installation is complete. We can go ahead and reboot the system. Just click finish and it will automatically reboot. You can go ahead and remove the USB drive. So now it will start booting not from the USB drive, but actually from your computer. We get in the welcome screen. So go ahead and press enter and it should start loading. Well, there we go. Here is a Max Linux and it is installed on the computer so we can go ahead and start using it. So right now it's not running from the USB drive, but rather it is running from the computer. So you can go ahead and start exploring it, whatever you like, changing all the settings that you like. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope you find this video helpful and it helped you install a Max Linux on your computer. And like I said in the beginning, if you want to see a full detailed guide how to install MX Linux on your computer, if you still have any questions, you can check out the other video that I'm going to put a link in the description. But this is it for today. As always, if you find this video helpful, please support it with your like. If you're first time to the channel, take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. If you would like to support my channel, you can use super thanks or you can check out the links in the description. I appreciate it very much, guys. Have a nice day and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.